Joining us now, she is the head coach of the two-time defending national champion Oklahoma Sooners, ranked number one in all the polls. And part of the series that you can see right now, actually, on ESPN Plus, as well as on Sooner Sports and all platforms, they call Championship Mindset. I speak of Patty Gass, who's back with us on In the Circle. Coach, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me back. Uh, I want to start off with this series. I've watched the first two episodes. From what I understand, it's a six-episode series, so it'll go into the season, a behind-the-scenes of your program. Uh, take me through this process. What is it like? Because you're basically having cameras follow you, and I know you're be you're interviewed in the series. So is our, uh, some of the players on the team. Take me take me behind the scenes of coming of deciding to let people in and and kind of uh, kind of see a different side of the program. <laughs> You're not going to like my answer, but I hate it. To be honest. <laughs> it's not, it's not uh, really who we are or what we are, but there's just seems to be a demand on it um, and trying to create, I don't know, pull out some history that's going on and so forth. And just there are a lot of people that want to know what our secret sauce is. And it really, it's just the athletes, really. I, I don't exactly know if you can find it through any of these series but we just talk about the way we do things and um we've always felt it a little taboo and we really honestly try to just keep our heads down and grind and get out of you know the limelight and the social media and some of our players are kind of stuck in those areas and um you know i can't force them to decide what they look at and what they don't but we do talk a lot about distraction and um, like your self-talk and that your self-talk and the things, the person that talks to you the most is you and your that voice will be with you till the day you die. So what kind of self-talk are you, are you giving yourself? And um, there's a guy I really like named Brett Ledbetter who we've done some work with and um, in his book, he shares like if you were in a softball game and you struck out with bases loaded um, and the winning run was at second, third or what have you, and you struck out, if, if we had the ability to take what you're thinking in your head and put it on the scoreboard for everyone to read, what would that feel like? And it was just interesting to hear our players kind of laugh about it. And so it's just, um, I'm not even on the right topic of what you asked me, but we try to be honest, but at the same time, it's something that I think a lot of them are not comfortable talking about always. Some of them are, and some of them very much are not. I've enjoyed it the first two episodes and I feel like in a way for your player, especially the new faces, it's kind of like, Hey, welcome. So I remember last year you told me, you know, when you're traveling, it's kind of like you're the Beatles with all the attention you get. I think for the new faces, it's kind of a way to introduce in an introduction to that. The veterans are used to it, but do you feel like in a way, cause I, I, I really have enjoyed the episodes and like, I, I know an episode two and I won't spoil it for the audience. They haven't caught up with it yet, but you talk a lot about the, the four transfers and the four transfers are in the episode and they talk about being a sooner and the experience of that. I feel like this episode's kind of ex helps kind of explain all that. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, um, when new players come in, we have a returning group of athletes that really have been indoctrinate, indoctrinated themselves by upperclassmen when they were young. So it's their role, it's their job to create the atmosphere that they know is important for us to be successful. So as a young athlete or a transfer, if you walk into this setting you got to learn how to get in it and compete and fight and at the same time root for your the person who's in the same position with you versus you know having these rivalries and so forth so um there's a lot to learn and specifically the transfers they all had made a comment like i, I really feel as a, like a super senior I want to have an opportunity to maybe win a national championship and you your team has shown you know how to do that and so before I even accept them into the program we talk a lot about what it takes 
and if they have what it takes. So it's no surprise when they arrive what it's going to look like and feel like. And that's really what we've been dealing with is just constant competition. I'm very fortunate to have so many really good athletes that every day we scrimmage, you've got two teams that are really, really good. That could be, you know, in the top five in the country is what I feel like. So our battles are serious. I mean, they are competitive and they are challenging and that creates warriors on the field. That's what I feel is happening with us or has been happening with us um, over the last five plus years. You've got a lot of returners, a lot of talent back, but is it still strange not to put in the lineup card, uh, Alo, let name in there among others as, <laughs> as well as Elam, Snow, Johns. I mean, it's kind of the underrated part. You've lost some good people here, a lot of talent to replace. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, it hurts because I really love those guys more than anything, more than their play. I just loved working with them as, as athletes and young women. And um, the beauty of this is I still talk to all of them, you know, occasionally. And Aloe is now going to be joining forces with the Sparks in Oklahoma City. And on the same field with Kehlani Ricketts and Lindsay Elam. I mean, I get to go watch that. That is exciting for me. So I, um, it's, they're gone, but they're still close enough that um, I get to talk with them quite often. I feel like it's been long overdue, by the way, having a professional team in Oklahoma for softball. I always wondered that even during the NPF days, why wasn't there a team in Oklahoma with that fan base? Like, that seemed like a no-brainer to me. So I'm happy to – I'm looking forward to that uh, this year uh, when that kind of – when that debuts there for Oak, that, over there in that market. Yeah, I think they're going to be playing at the Hall of Fame Stadium as well. And uh, they've got some good athletes. It's going to be a good team. I think they're putting together some really solid – uh, pitching staff and just good hitters. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Everybody's going to ask you about your offense and your pitching. I'm curious about your defense because I always, you know, it's the most underrated part of your team. Everybody always focuses on the other two aspects, but you've had great defenses that have helped you win national championships, great plays in Oklahoma City. And I'm curious in at the catching position, you do return Kenzie Hansen, but you lose Elam. You lose snow at first base. You have some options at first base. And then Johns was great at third base. Just talk about your defense because people look at your roster and they look at your talent. Oh, that's, you know, there's a lot of pieces and a lot of decisions. And I know part of it is who gives you the best option as far as defensively, as well as the bat. So how is that looking? Uh, Really good. I'm glad. I'm very thankful that you recognize that because everybody talks about the other two parts of the game because, um, You know, it's just the home run or the big strikeout. But last season, this the national championship in 2022, and I know there are big home runs, but defense killed the momentum of our opponent every time. And it was Jada Coleman reaching over the fence a couple times. It was Grace Lyon making great plays, uh, T.R.A., uh, throughout, all throughout the lineup, they were making big time defensive plays. So one thing I told our team is in order for you to get in this lineup, you have to be really, really good at two positions. I don't care what they are. Choose what you think you can be best at at two positions, as well as be a very, very solid hitter. So we really work hard to recruit the athlete that is I guess compared to say basketball, maybe you could be a great shooter, but not very good on defense or vice versa. To me, you got to be a two-way player. You got to be able to do, do a good job at the plate. Um, And it's not like you have to come here to hit home runs. That's not what we're asking. It's being a good, consistent clutch style hitter and a defender who is strong and fast, got to have a strong arm move well, uh, be consistent. And um, man, I'll tell you that when these guys really took to what, what I said to heart, I have been able to move a lot of players around and give us more options. And it's been beneficial to them as well. But they've really done a good job of working hard on their own to give themselves more opportunity to get in the lineup. So defense is my pride and joy. So at least I care about it. <laughs> so 
Well, I think I do too. And I think the, the, yeah. the, the history, the recent memory, and I, you know, Brito is a great example of what you just talked about. Cause when you got her, she was an infielder, you got her to move to the outfield and kind of be versatile, can play infield, outfield. So it, it feels like you've got that as well with some of the, in particular, the new faces, uh, the freshmen and the transfers that you could probably move the pieces around and give you some different options. Yeah. Right now, I think Brito has, is pretty much locked down third base, but Alina Torres can play a good third. Alina Torres is also playing, working in the outfield. She's also working at first. Sid Sanders working at first, working in the outfield. Haley Lee behind the plate, working in the outfield. Jossie Erickson, one of our freshmen, catcher, first base, outfield. I mean, they're just, they're moving all over. And I thought, okay, well, they're still going to be a weakness because that's their second position. And they really are mastering some of this. So I'm, I'm really excited and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that they listened and that they did the work to make them stuff an option. So the newcomers have understood this and jumped right in on it. Pitching wise, you returned Jordy Ball. You returned Nicole May. You got Alex Taraco over from Michigan. You got SJ Guerin, the freshman, and, and Kirsten Deal, uh, the freshman, who's the number one ranked player in the country. How do you feel about your staff uh, this year here? Uh, which obviously got to replace Trout Wine. It was a big winner for you last year, but overall, looks uh, a lot of depth. And obviously, I'll, I'll, everybody will be asking about Jordy, but I'm curious about the staff as a whole. Sure. Um, very confident about the staff. They offset each other very, very well. Uh, well, I will talk on Jordy. She's feeling really good, and she's feeling, I believe, like she's ready to jump on that mound and pick up where she left off when she was feeling healthy. And the end of the season was really rough for her because she felt she, you know, that was her dream to always be at the World Series or in postseason and maybe felt like she let us down. It's not her fault. It was just something that couldn't be avoided. And she did a good job of rehabbing and letting it heal and all that good stuff. So uh, we are in a good place with Jordy. She's just really, really excited about this start of the season. Uh, Nicole May, I believe this is going to be her best season. I think she's an underrated, not talked about pitcher on the staff that deserves a little more attention. Um, so I think she's going to really come into her own. Uh, Alex Storaco is, I mean, she's been a little bit um, overwhelmed by the power of the, of our hitters and facing them every day is not easy. So what you got to do with our pitchers is keep them um with a good mindset, not getting caught up in results, but just the process of, you know, their pitches and so forth. And, and that's sometimes hard because, I mean, the, the, the offense does not let up on, on some of these pitchers because they're all fighting to get in the lineup. But um, Alex has had some breakthroughs since the break and has come back. And the other day had just a phenomenal um, – we had an inner squad. She was just phenomenal. I think in five innings, she might have had eight strikeouts, which is unheard of because we just don't strike out a lot. So it was good to see her feeling confident. She was really fired up with that. And then uh, bringing Kirsten Deal, we call her KD, a lefty, into the lineup as well. Uh, we haven't, we've been a year without a lefty when Giselle left. Um, KD adds a good lefty lefty matchup. Um, she's going to be really good. She's going to help us without question. So, um, and I'll say that SJ Guerin is going to redshirt this freshman year. She's got a lot of work to do and things to learn. And I think it's the right, it was a mutual decision. And so I think that'll benefit her. So right now we've got four very strong pitchers. We've got lots of options with a lot of different hitting matchups that we're going to face from the mound. So I, I like where we're standing. I remember two years ago, you told me the offense had their way with the pitching and you thought that was the best offense you've had ever. And it proved to be right as the season that played out last year, you said the pitchers had the advantage yeah. over the offensive players. And that proved to be correct. How, how has that gone this fall and into this year? Has it been one side had the advantage or the other? Or has it been more kind of a back and forth? Um, I think a back and forth. I think the, the hitters might have had a little bit of advantage in the fall. 
but um, you've got Jordy trying to come back from, you know, what she was dealing with in May and June throughout the summer. So we were taking it slow with Jordy. Um, Alex is in a brand new system with a brand new pitching coach trying to learn, you know, her way around. And that was a little like you have to give her grace because she's learning and uh, they're trying to learn about each other. Uh, Nicole May had some good success um, and she had a, a few nagging injuries at times. I'm not trying to make excuses for them, but they were just not where they are right now in the fall. And uh, Kirsten Deal was very effective, um, as was SJ, the two lefties, because we haven't seen a lot of lefty from our pitching staff in the last year. Or so um, I just feel that they have refined themselves some. But also, I mean, when you face a, <laughs> a lineup that's seen you every day, what do you throw them? They know your best stuff. They know your tendencies. They know these things. So um, I think it's been a kind of a back and forth battle. But as of this last week, we had a inner squad scrimmage. The pitchers definitely won that matchup. Offensively, obviously return a lot. You got Haley Lee added there, Sydney Sanders, uh, Torres. Talk about your offense overall. What's the idea? You feel the identity there. And has there been a hitter or two that's returned that has taken it to a different level uh, this fall and, and into this season? Do you feel like, well, kind of be one that, okay, watch out for this player. This one's really improved. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that person right now, I'd call Jada Coleman. And what has improved, she's always been a very good hitter. But what's improved is her power. And uh, she is absolutely smashing and sending balls deep over and over and over. When she came to our program, in her mind, it was, I'm a slapper, I'm a buncher, I'm a base runner. And then she started to get a little bit stronger and feel what the weight room can do for her. But she's got that body, and she's really done a good job of strengthening and and learning from JT a lot about um, – just different substance of hitting and things that we've, you know, just our tendencies and things we're looking for. And um, she really has gravitated to JT's teaching and learning. And um, so I think she's going to be a surprise just for power numbers. Um, Kinsey Hansen's been having a really good fall and that's just because she has gotten some relief from her knee. She was really struggling last year with knee problems and it really affected her swing. Uh, so I, I would tell you, we'll see that. Tiara is Tiara. Um, Sid Sanders has got some really natural power as well. I mean, she hits the ball very hard, as does Haley Lee. A clutch hitter in my mind is Alina Torres. And it's not like she's, you know, hitting home run after home run, but she's hitting gaps when they count. And that has been fun to watch. So I'd like to see that. Jossie Erickson is a big freshman hitter, lefty hitter, that I think is going to help us. Uh, Riley Boone has created a lot of power in her swing as well, much like Jada. So I don't feel like I have like those slappers. I don't, you know, these guys want to swing and and they're doing a good job of it. So it's throughout the lineup. Alyssa, Alyssa Brito has improved offensively. I felt like last year uh, during postseason, she was really important for us. So, I mean, I could go on and on, but the, it, it's just a very potent offense that has interchanging parts. So every player on this team has some kind of role that they can step in to help us to win so it's gonna be fun it's a little challenging on my side because a lot of these players would be starters in most every program but um we're just we're going to work this as a just kind of a commune you know community of players right but it brings because, competition you've told me you like uh -huh. it brings a ton of competition internally in practice like if you want to play you got to earn it in practice 100 percent. i will tell you that's that's ultimately the reason for our success is the way we practice which is hard but the competition at every position it, it is constant it is constant 
and the fight is constant and they know it. And if you let off the gas, you're going to get beat or someone's going to step right over you and they don't like that. So that has been the big difference truly for this team. You've got a uh, challenging schedule uh, starting out in California. I mean, it's a, it's a, you got a really stacked schedule. I'm curious, what is one or two things you're looking forward to finding out about your team? Because you've told me in the past, you like to find out about your team when you play somebody else in a live competition. You can only learn so much in practice. You're going to find out things that first week in California. What are a couple things you're looking forward to finding out that maybe you have some questions about your team? Yeah, I – I don't know yet. I think I'm going to find out when it happens. I, I think we've got some good leadership. We've got, got some uh, veterans on this team that know how to lead young ones through it. Uh, I, I'm i interested to see how we handle adversity and as a team. We've been separated as a team, like one team against another for so long. I, I don't I've never seen them all in one dugout except a couple times when we were in the fall playing um, against other opponents. So I, I am interested to see the kind of chemistry energy that comes out of the dugout. Uh, when going gets tough, if we're behind, how do we respond to it as a team? Um, I, I'm anxious to see the leaders that really step forward and uh, the way I, I just like to listen. I like to hear what they're saying and um, how people respond. Of course, one of the teams you're going to see there, uh, if I could start the season with, is Duke. You'll see a familiar face on the other dugout, and that's Sydney Romero, who I had on the show here. And she told me when she got the Duke job, the first person she reached out to was you. Uh, and she said that meant, you know, that was very emotional because she wouldn't be where she is without you. What is it like for you? Uh, Fale, for example, now is the North Carolina assistant. So you got now, you've got an invested interest in Tobacco Road there uh, <laughs> among among your coaches. But what is it like when you see your former players go out there and get full-time assistant jobs and they still seek out your advice? What is that like when you get that call and says, coach, I got this job? Well, first, I am just so – it's one of the joys of my job is just watching our players, what they do when they leave. Um, and I especially show interest in their coaching because I'm going to be coaching against them or uh, be out recruiting against them or what have you. So um, it's Sid and Folly have been – and Shay, those three have been very, very um, – open and talking and calling and asking for help or advice or what have you. But um, I'm just proud. I'm proud of the fact that um, maybe they saw me trying to be a mom or a grandma and, and a wife and doing all the things um, that you try to do to have a balanced life. And they've seen me out of balance as well. But the fact that they still step into the coaching realm is exciting for me. Um, they know the game. I think they would do will do very well with young people, and their characters are on point, and just everything about them is is what any mother and father would want their daughter to be taught by. Are those kinds of athletes? So I'm I'm proud of them, and it's going to be really something special to see Sid on the other side and. Um, it's just, it's exciting for me. And I know when I'm done coaching, I can go out and watch those guys coach and I can relax and watch them stress. So I'm looking forward to that too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, coach Ricketts told me she's excited to have you come to Starkville uh, just to, just from a pride standpoint. And I know you're proud of her with the great run she had last year and they're building facilities up there. Uh, it's, it's, is it, it's all, it's unique always when you see, I mean, it's to the point now you have such a long list that you're going to have to play some of your, uh, former, you know, people in your coaching tree. It's unavoidable. No, absolutely. One person besides Sam and a guy, Nicole, I mean, um, um, Courtney Diefel at yep. Arkansas, Michelle Gascoigne over at uh, Northwestern. We played at the World Series and the list goes on. And it's just um, whether they played for me or they were in our program, they have a piece of us and I am always invested in what they're doing. So, um, my phone will ring every once in a while for them to, and they know it's always open. I will always answer the phone for any of them if they ever need help. 
no doubt. And of course, another one is Utah, Paige Parker there and DJ Gasso, <laughs> yeah. which as I yeah. shared with you off the air, he's become my favorite Gasso now. He was fantastic when we had him on the show. He just got promoted to the associate head coaching role. Uh, he joked that, you know, he doesn't do much talking when you all play, but he does try to convince his brother to like, hey, can you can we share some batting cage during the offseason? But uh, the brother doesn't return the call. <laughs> no, DJ, look, if I shared some things about DJ, you might put me back as your favorite, or maybe JT stepped over me too. I don't Ooh. know, but there's some things about DJ you don't know about, but he knows how to, he knows how to work the room, let's say. So, um, he, he yeah. definitely, he, he definitely warned me about that. Crap. Yeah, he definitely uh, warned he me about that. Crap. <laughs> yes, he did warn about that, that, uh, yes, you do have material on him, especially after the whole drama with the wedding a couple of years ago where oh, <laughs> the series, but no, I, I mean, what's it like to, what's it proud, how proud of you of him getting promoted at Utah? I mean, he's, I mean, talking to him, I was so impressed by the passion that he has in the game uh, and, and just the knowledge and just, he just, it just, he breathes it. And obviously he's been around it and, you know, JT's the same way, but what is that like for you? to fo them following kind of in your footsteps and coaching. Cause I know you've said you didn't, you did not encourage that. They kind of decided that on their own. Yeah. I never thought they were even paying attention when I would take them <laughs> on the road or they, we were at home, they were just playing wall ball against the siblings of our players usually, or just messing around. I didn't never thought they paid attention when I came home. They would not question me much. And then as they were starting into their careers, and you know kind of ending their careers and and wondering what they were going to do next both of them naturally wanted to go into coaching and that i was pleased about but was it going to be baseball was it going to be softball and um i'm, I'm pleased too that they chose softball because i i think they're very relatable they've been around young women and understand how to work with them and so forth so there was a time when I mean, I, I just thought I was not doing a good job for my family because I was so worried about our team and not paying enough attention to my kids and thinking, oh, geez, you know, I'm going to regret this. And, and there were times when I really did regret my position and what I was doing, not giving my time to my kids the way I should. But when JT got the job, he started his first job at Purdue and then DJ getting the job at Utah. It's just been a really full circle moment, truly, where I just sit back like, wow, that is amazing. So my ultimate dream one day is to sit and watch them coach and have their kids crawling all over me so I can be a grandma and be a regular person and alleviate the stress that goes with it and just, you know, root for them wherever they are and whatever they're doing. No doubt. And uh, he's got a great future and uh, it's certainly yep. exciting to see every time y'all play. Actually, all right, you've moved ahead of him now. I, you're, you're back on my top. You've done a good <laughs> job there. Uh, la I'll let him know. He's got to prove it on the field, right? You, gotta, you can't just give uh, it yes. to him, right? He's got to prove it. Uh, yes, last he's all talk. Last one, uh, before we let you go, you've been so kind. We've talked in the past about the new stadium. In fact, in the opening episode of the Championship Mindset, it talks, it shows you kind of the, the, the ceremony for the new stadium and, the, and on track. Just tell us, give us an update because people constantly asked about that. It's, I know it's still on schedule for 2024. Uh, I've had Coach Ricketts. Everybody's like, kind of like, man, now is when the new stadium comes. Uh, they're like looking forward to seeing that when that opens. Can, tell us a little bit about that, an update on that. Well, it's been a long time coming, without question. Um, the update is um, they went in and uh, pulled a bunch of trees out at night so people wouldn't be so upset watching that happen. And they've leveled the ground. And actually, they um, dig in, have dug down into the soil so you can see the outline of an infield. And the... They have perimeter fence, so when you're driving by, you can kind of see over the fence just a little bit, but the perimeter fence is so big. It's like takes so much room. I didn't expect or anticipate the stadium was going to take up that much land. It is huge. It is huge. So it just kind of is a wow factor when I go by it, like, oh, my goodness. I just didn't expect it to be as large an area 
And um, so it's moving. It's moving. We got to get rid of the ice that we're dealing with right now and get these machines back into uh, rolling mode. And But it's progressing. And I've been in a lot of meetings and I've got my hand prints on a lot of this. And I'm really excited that I'm allowed to do that and, and doing some research and searching what I think will be best, I'm really paying a lot of attention to the inside of the stadium, the amenities for the athletes. It's going to be top-notch special. And I, th- I guess, Eric, this is a good way to put it. When we've, in recruiting in the past, we would take recruits and take them down to football and say, oh, look at what football has. Look at their locker room. Look at the foyer. Look at their trophy room. Look at all of this. And once we get this built, I do not have to do that anymore. We are self-contained in recruiting, and I don't have to showcase somebody else's facilities to get a recruit here. So I'm really excited. That, that's a whole another level of wow for us. Looking forward to that. Uh, I know that's a lot of Sooner fans are looking forward to that. A lot of fans are looking forward to that, uh, Coach. So you uh, well-deserved, well-earned, uh, I would say, uh, Coach. So we look forward to that. But I know there's a season ahead before that, so we'll let you go, Coach. I know it's a busy time. Uh, but always thanks for uh, taking the time to talk to us. Uh, I know it's hectic with the schedule and getting the start of the season, but we always uh, appreciate you uh, coming on the show and share your knowledge and, t- uh, and talk some softball. And uh, we hope to uh, do it again soon, and we'll cross paths some sort during the season. Yeah, sounds great. Anytime. Thank you for having me and just keep me number one. Just, just, you're in, you're one. Say it. Just yeah. say it. You don't have to believe it, but just say it. Just no, you've it. moved up. You've moved back ahead of what I, you know, DJ's <laughs> very persuasive. I got persuaded. I admit. Yes, it. yes, yes. <laughs> okay. As long as you know. All right.